Previously I've been using um, thermal transfer paper to make PCBs but from now I'm going to be using uh, this stuff which is uh, photo sensitive um, film which is sensitive to ultraviolet light uh, and I'm holding it under LED lighting at the minute and LED lighting doesn't seem to have emit much uh, ultraviolet light if any uh, as standard um, so it's, it seems to be okay to handle um, in light light areas but I still block out the windows even though I think glass is supposed to um, filter out a lot of ultraviolet light so the start of the process is still the same um, I'm using a bit of very fine wire wool uh, and just um, rub over the board just to remove any oxidization if the board's been left out in the air at all you can see that this cleans up um, the oxidization to like that Next I just use some isopropyl alcohol just to clean off any dirt uh, and oil and um, or fingerprints, anything like that. Then um, cut a piece of uh, the photo resist, roughly the kind of size it is required. I'm only making a very small PCB just as an example here as I've been just running some tests. Um, And the and uh, this photo resist it has um has like a layer on it, but it's very because it's very thin. It's very difficult to tell tell the, the the like it's got a film layer which needs to be removed. So you just get a bit of cell tape, some kind of sticky tape, uh, and just um, cut it into two bits. And then. Stick uh, one bit of tape on one side of the uh, of the film. Keep hold of the tab at the top um, of the tape, and stick the other bit of tape on the other side of the film. Just push it together, and then if you pull them apart, that should um, that should remove the film, hopefully. There it is. So be careful not to let it fold back on itself. And you need to put the copper board onto the film. It's a bit fiddly because I'm doing this in front of the camera. And then just push it, push, push the, the film onto the board. Like that. Make sure there's a, all the air bubbles are, are out of it. You might Use some kind of um, something to just, just um, push all the air bubbles out, but it goes on quite quite well. So the next thing you need to apply some heat to it, heat to the film. Um, I've, I'm just using my reflow station, uh, cheap reflow station, costs about thirty pounds. I think I've seen people put these through um, the boards through a, um, a laminator, but I don't know how, how effective that is or if it damages the laminator at all. Uh, but all you need to do is apply about 200 degrees across the film and that will melt the film onto the uh, onto the copper clad board so I go across this a couple of times with the laminator with the um, reflow station so this is the circuit which I'm going to apply to the actual board um, it's printed on I think with acetate um, and uh, my laser printer is not brilliant at printing on this. But you can get stuff, acetate for laser printers, or you can get acetate for inkjet printers. Uh, an inkjet printer might give a, a better result. I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't tried that. Uh, but this one's printed with with my laser printer onto laser printer acetate. And then I've just it comes on A4 sheets, and I just cut it down to the size that I want to put onto the circuit itself. Uh, and then I print it out on KiCad, and you have to do a, a an inverted print so that all the light bits come out dark and the dark bits come out light and I've also uh, put little dots in the centers of the uh, pads uh, and there's an option in KiCad to do that and that helps a lot when it comes to drilling because the the little dots from in the center of the pad get etched, etched away and it guides the drill otherwise it's uh, very difficult to drill them I found. Now I think most people um, will expose this to UV light 
um, as it is. But what I do is I, I, I like to, on this step, actually remove uh, the other layer um, from the, the film. So I just score around the film with a knife just to hopefully, uh, hopefully you should be able to remove this and leave the film on the PCB. I just found it, it makes it a bit easier to do, to expose it. So there, there's the top layer of the film. And now it's just, just the film on the, uh, on the PCB itself. And it's, it's good to have, um, if you put some kind of writing onto the, onto the design, then you know which way to put it onto the, um, onto the board itself. Uh, because uh, it, the, the writing has to read correctly. It, it mustn't be a mirror image. Uh, and then just place the design on top of the, the film. And this is one of the reasons why I, I remove that film as, as this part of the process, whereas I think other people don't necessarily do that. It's because of that, actually, um, it's a bit tacky, the, um, the ultraviolet sensitive stuff. And it actually holds that, holds that very flat onto the, the design, flat onto the board itself. The next step is to actually expose it to ultraviolet light uh, so that the film reacts. And to do that, it's, you can, it's actually quite simple. You don't need any much special equipment or anything. So I've made a little uh, box here. And uh, I've got ultraviolet LEDs and they, they're adequate enough to for the exposure. I've got 555 timer in there um, and a transistor to drive the LEDs so that I can set the variable resistor to the exposure length which I want, and I, th I think I've set it to about 30 seconds, I found for is, is good enough. Uh, and this produces a huge amount of UV, really, um, for, for the requirement. So 30 seconds is plenty. Got a little LED on top to show when it's on and when it's off, a, uh, a button to start the exposure. And this is just a DC-DC converter module, which you can get on eBay. It costs about one or two pounds. Uh, and I'm just converting 12 volt input down to 4 volts because the LEDs run directly from 4 volts. The, the 555 timer is supposed to run at 5 volts, uh, but it seems to run okay. This one does uh, 4 volts, or a CMOS one will uh, should run at 4 volts without a problem. Um, and yeah, the bottom of the box, I've just tried to block out the um, UV for when I'm using it because you shouldn't look into UV light. All you do is put the um, circuit into the into the box, put the top on. I've got a 12 volt supply here, so if I just plug that in uh, and press the button, and that starts the exposure, and when the green LED goes out, I can tell that the UV uh, exposure is finished. And like I said, I think I set that for about 30 seconds, but I'll probably jump to the end of uh, the exposure process. And that's finished, I uh, don't plug it. And look inside. It's probably not not going to be obvious on camera, but that's that's gone um, a darker colour. And so, first of all, we need to just use a knife to lift lift off one of the corners of the design, and that should come away then. Well, I, and you can see it's been transferred. The circuit design has been transferred onto the photo resist. The next part of the process is the first bit of chemical. Now, you can get these chemicals, um, or you can get a specific chemicals online, uh, but I've just used um, soda crystals, which you can get in uh, most um, uh, supermarkets, I think. And uh, I, think, I think they're called soda crystals, or if you look on the back of the pack, it says something like sodium carbonate dec decahydrate or something like that. Uh, and you can see bits left behind from when I've been doing uh, a, a test board to start with. So I'm going to put this in here, which is the soda crystals uh, with water. I'm just going to give it a, a quick stir with my ruler. And just read the back of the pack and, and see um, the warnings it says, because it's an irritant and you've got to avoid getting it in your eyes or on your skin. Um, but what I'll do is I leave that in there for, I think I'll leave it in there for about 15 minutes. Uh, so I'll I'll come back after that's that's finished. So that's been in there about 15 minutes. Uh, and now just have to lift it up and 
use a toothbrush or something like that to just take away the um, the um, unexposed area and, it, and you can see um, where it's slightly blue the unexposed area because of the tint of the film you can see when the copper comes through yeah, so you can see when you're lifting it off and you can you can be reasonably firm with the toothbrush uh, but you don't want to be too firm because you don't want to lift off uh, the stuff that you don't that you want to remain on there so once you've done that um, just get some some water in another container and rinse off the uh, sodium carbonate so you can see there's like a few edges of the track where it's come away and that's probably because I, I left rather than 15 minutes I probably should have left it 10 minutes in, in the sodium carbonate but this is only the second board that I've made using this method so it's not too bad um, so what I'll do is I'll now etch this so just use ferric chloride as usual and as always I've got these little stands which I put the board in just hold it off the bottom of the tank and um, hold it place it with a face uh, with the copper side facing down because then the copper falls away from the board and it gives a much quicker and better result uh, it doesn't I'm not it's not very good with the copper facing up it doesn't tend to etch very well uh, and just give it a little bit of a, a wiggle just to get rid of any air bubbles underneath the board and then I'll, I'll leave that because um, it's not not warmed at all um, so I'll leave that for about half an hour in there I'll just put a cover on it so that's been in there half an hour so just take that out and rinse that and it's etched, etched the copper away. Uh, so there's just one more stage now uh, for the etching process. Let's go back to the uh, soda crystals uh, and place it back in there for about another half an hour. And that will remove the, uh, the, the exposed, um, the exposed photoresist. Uh, so it will uh, all end up with a nice clean clean board so finally out of the soda crystals and in for a final rinse just scrape off some of that stuff and it should the the rest of the resist should just come off fairly easily now reveal the circuit board so after that's been cleaned off um, just then drill the board so when the PCB is drilled um, afterwards it's uh, got to put the components into the PCB and I just print out one of these uh, a silk screen of the top just to just, um, show where the um, components go into to aid putting the components into the board so now the circuit is assembled, it's soldered, it's time to test the circuit. So I've got a 9 volt battery here, which goes onto this connector here. And I've got a speaker to go onto there. And I've got audio, which I can start from my phone, which goes onto there. And the amplifier works. If you shield the speaker, it makes it a bit louder as well. So that was a successful um, creation of a board using um, ultraviolet photoresist.